Microsoft has announced the end-of-life support for Windows 10 starting October 14th, 2025. What's up, everyone? It's Adam with the Don Tech, and today I'm here to tell you the truth about Windows 10 losing support, what it means for you, and what you need to do about it. So what is end-of-life or EOL? Simply put, it's the day that Microsoft is put in to say that they're going to stop providing security updates and technical support for the Windows 10 operating system. And a little bit of a blast to the past, we've been through this song and dance before. With Windows XP losing its support in April 2014, and Windows 7 losing its support in January of 2020. But why does this one feel different? For starters, when Windows XP lost its support, you had Windows 7. It was a great, viable operating system. And when Windows 7 lost its support, at that time, you had Windows 10, which was much more robust. And while Windows 7 to 10 was not a fun transfer, it still performed relatively well and ended up fulfilling the needs that we had. However, this time it's Windows 11 only. The reality is that due to the lack of security updates, your system could be exposed to exploits with new vulnerabilities on these unsupported operating systems, but that is usually widely overblown. And most PCs, when you buy them anyway, out of the box or whatever, they're missing updates for several months because it's loaded with an ISO from when it came from the factory. So really in the grand scheme of things, unless there's that zero day exploit that can affect everybody, you're not gonna have any problems. It's gonna be business as usual where your system's kind of catching up to updates anyway. Well, Windows 11 has much stricter requirements, including TPM 2.0 and specific CPU generations, even if the hardware and the specs are far above the recommendations. And Windows 11 just isn't any good. While it's understandable that most early adopters of a Microsoft operating system are paying beta testers, it's kind of under the knowledge that when the operating system comes out, it'll take a couple of months, a couple of revisions, a couple of updates, and then the operating system becomes more rock solid. It's been the same thing with Windows XP. Vista never really hit that mark. Windows 7 definitely had it with Service Pack 1. Windows 8 did a little bit better with 8.1. And then Windows 10, after about two years, got a little bit better. So the biggest challenge is that Windows 11 has been out for almost four years years and there still hasn't been that update that change in the operating system that makes it whoa now it's actually good now it's actually viable i'm answering questions about this all the time where it's about you know okay my system says i need to use windows 11 but my computer is not compatible what do i do and if your system isn't compatible you're just forced to buying a brand new computer which economically isn't always the thing that just comes out of the blue of like okay well i have to buy a computer at this point because and most people in the repair field want to actually fix what they have that they can get working again versus having to go through the hassle of having to buy something new, having to set up something new. Because you got to remember, Windows 10 has been out for a very long time now, coming up on 10 years or so. And a lot of people have computers that are set up well. And in the past, you could upgrade with Windows XP, Windows 7 to the latest operating system and preserve your environment. And while it wasn't always recommended, my first video on YouTube was actually the verdict of why you should not do that with Windows 7 to Windows 10. A lot of times the software is just kind of set up and then it will go from one operating system to the next operating system and everything kind of stays remotely the same. Whereas if you buy a new computer, all that setup has to happen again. You have to move all of your data. You have to install all of your software. And if you lost some of your software or you lost the account settings to some of that software, that means rebuying some of that software. And some of the software is not cheap. So given that, we run into a couple of our options of what you can actually do when Windows 10 loses support in October of 2025. But option number one is my favorite option, and that's where you just don't do anything. The no panic option. You understand that your PC will not explode the day after support ends, and you just continue to use caution online when you're browsing the internet. You go through with your traditional common sense methodologies online. You don't click on random things online. You don't download random things online. You just kind of keep yourself safe, changing your passwords as you need to. Option number two is extended security updates also known as ESU. Microsoft has announced plans for the consumers side to have about a 29-ish dollar plan for the first year of security updates. My biggest problem is having to link your Microsoft account to your computer in order to get these extended service updates. That is a big problem for me, and I don't like using Microsoft accounts. They're buggy, they're hard to clean after they get messy, because they sync settings from one device to the next device. And while that is okay to some degree, and it can make setup of a new PC a little bit easier, if something goes wrong and you think, okay, there's something wrong with this computer, let me buy a new computer. You buy a new computer, you log into your Microsoft account, you sign in, all those settings come on over, the same exact problem is happening. How is that possible? 
because the Microsoft accounts are trash. I never recommend using them unless you are absolutely required to. And this is besides the potential privacy concerns that come alongside with it as well. If you'd like to see a video on some of these things that I'm going on tangents about, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know. I'll try to make some videos to expand on some of these ideas. Option number three is to buy a new PC. You know, a couple of years ago, you bought a $1,500 plus gaming PC, or you just bought this system that you love, you've set up, and it's amazing, and it's perfect. Just go buy another one. You know, who cares if that computer was really expensive and works perfectly? That's your option. Buy a new PC because it's not compatible with Windows 11. And not only is this an economical issue for many to be forced into buying something that doesn't even need to be replaced, what's going to happen to all of these computers? Are they just going to go in landfills? Because they're fully functional, but they just don't work with Windows 11. I'm a big advocate for fixing what you can as you can and replacing what needs to be replaced. This is just going to mean that perfectly good hardware and perfectly good computers are just going to waste. But don't worry, Windows 11 will make sure to tell you that keeping your brightness up and your PC screen all the time has a bigger, larger carbon footprint. The fourth option is going to be talking about unofficial ways to upgrade your system from Windows 10 to Windows 11. There's a lot of different tools out there that can actually sub, sub something. There's a word that's in my brain that just kind of went out of my brain as I was saying it, that will subvert, go away from, it will bypass, let's just go for that one, bypass the Windows 11 requirements, the TPM chips and the hardware requirements. And I haven't personally used it, but I've seen a lot of people using it that's not a big problem to do that, but whether or not A, that still means you're gonna get support for Windows 11 later, because if Microsoft just decides to say the same thing, hey, this version of Windows 11 is not supported with your hardware, then you're in the same situation. Yes, you have Windows 11, but if you're not able to get updates because of that arbitrary setting, you know, you might kind of be stuck. But again, if you're curious about me trying to see what that would be like on a test PC that should not be able to run Windows 11, I've got a old gaming computer that definitely cannot run Windows 11. I think it's like a third gen i7 or something. It's a great Asus gaming laptop. I love it and so much. I'd be willing to put a new solid state drive in there and trying to install Windows 11 on it. It doesn't even have TPM 2.0 either, I'm pretty sure. So if you wanna see that, give this video a like, leave a comment down below and let me know and I can try to make that a video. So let's get down to the real problem and the real issue that you may face by continuing to run Windows 10 years after its support is over. And it's something that I ran into myself as well, which is why I upgraded from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I kept Windows 7 for years after the end of life updates until TurboTax threw into it, decided with their installation of their software with just changing a zero to a one or a one to a zero that Windows 7 is no longer supported. So you cannot install TurboTax. You cannot do your taxes. But that was the only reason why everything else on the system was working perfectly. Eventually, you may have some problems with things like Google Chrome or Premiere, Microsoft Office, certain antivirus software products, or other productivity suites that you use on the daily basis that may decide, hey, your version of operating system is no longer supported, so you're going to have to upgrade it in order to get more of these updates. Usually, excuse me, it doesn't mean that that software is going to just stop working entirely. The only time that would be an issue would be, for example, on Windows XP. While a lot of newer software can't run on XP because it wasn't programmed for it, you can still use a lot of the stuff that was built for Windows XP at the time. But if you try to run Internet Explorer on Windows XP, you will not be able to get proper internet. If you run Chrome, if you can even get it installed, it will not be able to get internet. There was a version of Firefox, like version 40 or something like that, that would still allow internet access on a Windows XP machine. And you can go and download that software still and use it, but that's kind of the only thing you'd have to worry about is if those software programs decide you can no longer run it on this version of Windows and you can no longer get updates, then that reduces the functionality of the computer. But besides the internet on XP, not even Windows 7 yet, I'm not aware of any problems that would prevent you from using your system for years to come. So if you haven't already guessed it, Myself, I'm going to be running Windows 10, which is an odd thing to say, for as long as I possibly can. I am absolutely disgusted at the state of Windows 11 24H2, which I can't even run on my equipment. Because of the way that my house is networked and how everything is kind of intermingled, I cannot run that update because that 24H2 update for Windows 11 completely breaks it. And sure, you can kind of fix it, I guess. You can go through and reroute and redo all the different things. I don't have time for that, man. I don't have time to redo my entire network setup just to have a certain operating system compatible with it. 
So I'm gonna keep running it as long as I possibly can. I'll be here just the same as you guys, October 15th, 2026, knowing that the system is still gonna be functional. The only thing that might push me up might be TurboTax, but honestly, depending on the state of Windows 11 at that point, I might sacrifice another computer, install TurboTax on that one, do the taxes, and then just kind of push it aside as long as I can. But remember not to panic, assess your own personal needs, leave any comments with any questions that you have, and I will give you the best information that you're probably not hearing anywhere else. Because I'm not a sales guy, I'm not here to tell you to buy new things, I'm here to make it so that you can use what you have as long as you can. So feel free to follow me anywhere at the Don Tech. I'll keep you updated as this Windows 11 nonsense changes and as Windows 10 end of support draws near. And if you found this video helpful, you know what to do, feel free to give it a like, subscribe to it and everything like that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And remember, the Don's got your back.